Hi everyone. A few days back I posted a short video showing my best guess as to what the Catch Me Up on Other Devices feature might look like when it rolls out on Android later this year. And this video is in response to some who have reached out to me on the Humane Discord asking me how it works. For starters, this is a solution for Android only. As far as I can tell, there is no way to implement a workaround like this on iOS, so iOS users will just have to wait for the official Humane solution to roll out this summer. A couple of additional prerequisites. You're going to want to make sure that the number for your phone has a name in your synced contacts. I've gone with literally your phone. That's one that it seems to like. And it's really important just that you have an entry in order to avoid unknown number being fed into the summarization model. And it's also better if the name for your device isn't something that looks like the name of a person. And finally, you're going to want to make sure that the contact isn't a trusted contact in your AI contact list, or you'll kind of get sick of the chime that keeps going off. So having done that, let's try out a couple of sample texts to see what the, what the Catch Me Up feature does with text messages. Message from Craig Martin, colon, are you available for dinner on Wednesday, question mark? So send that out and give the AI pin a moment and now do the catch me up gesture. Craig Martin is asking if you are available for dinner on Wednesday. So right there we see as we had hoped that the AI pin is treating the message body as if Craig Martin is the actual sender of the message, not your phone, which is what I have in my contact database. And it's also applying a conversational treatment to the message itself. If we want to listen to the raw message, we can do that. Playback of the previous message. Your phone said, message from Craig Martin. Are you available for dinner on Wednesday? Okay, so there we hear the actual literal message content along with the name of the actual sender, which is your phone. Let's try something a little bit different, uh, what we might get from, say, WhatsApp. WhatsApp message from Brian Franklin, colon, I'm sorry to hear that you had to cancel your vacation. And we're going to do something a little bit different at the end of this message. We're going to put in the crying eyes emoji to see what uh, Catch Me Up does with that. And catch me up. You received a message from Brian Franklin expressing sympathy for your canceled vacation. Craig Martin also asked if you are available for lunch on Friday and dinner on Wednesday. All right, it sounds like it's digging up some previous messages there, but we'll, we'll let that slide for now. But the key thing there was just expressing sympathy. It was, it was how it translated the crying eyes emoji. So obviously, if um, every notification is going to be generating a text message, that's a lot of text messages. So on the off chance that your text messages are metered, I don't know if that's still a thing, um, you're not going to want to use this as it will be generating a significant number of outbound texts. So having sort of seen what Catch Me Up does with our text messages, now we have to think about, okay, what are we going to do to generate the automated messages? Now, here we have a couple of different choices. Um, first off, if you go to the Play Store, you'll find any number of uh, SMS forwarding apps. I'm not going to go into these since a lot of them are just thinly disguised spyware apps used to track people without their knowledge. And also these only handle SMS for the most part, not Gmail, WhatsApp, uh, any other apps we might want to send notifications for. Uh, next up, if you've ever done any Android automation, you've likely encountered the Tasker family of apps. The, the two you would want to use here are Tasker and Auto Notification. I think this new Join app, from what I know of it, I haven't actually used it, but I, I think this will work as well. Um, yeah, so if you've used the tax, Tasker apps in the past, the learning curve is a little steep. 
um, the UI is a bit fiddly and uh, yeah but if you're familiar with those and feel free to use them but for the sake of this demo I'm using a new app well new for me anyway an app called MacroDroid not as full featured but it is easier to use and demo and uh, yeah the UI is a bit less fiddly so let's take a look at MacroDroid also want to mention that I have no association with MacroDroid I'm not getting anything to promote it but really whatever you use do the right thing and pay for the pro version if you get some utility out of it so if you're going to use MacroDroid that's $6.99 for the pro version or one one hundredth the price of a pin so you can probably afford it so we'll go through the intro screens and then first off MacroDroid wants to send us some notifications we'll allow that it applied my pro upgrade since I had purchased that so let's dive into adding a macro. So first let's tackle messages. So everything in MacroDroid is broken down to triggers, actions, and constraints. Our trigger in this case is going to be a device event notification. And as soon as we click notification, MacroDroid knows that it's going to need some more permissions. So the first permission it's going to need is the notification access option. Now this I mean, what you're doing here is you're saying this app can snoop on every single notification on your phone. So this is what Android considers a somewhat dangerous permission. So rather than just the usual dialogue followed by grant permission, it's actually going to take us into settings and we're going to have to go in and manually select MacroDroid as a device or as an application that we want to give notification access to. And when we do that, then we're going to see the dialogue detailing the permissions. And now we can go back to MacroDroid, select notification. We want notification received. In this case, we want the messages app. And from my own experience, I've found that messages tends to send out some messages that we probably don't want to pass along to the AI pin. Um, the main one is a message that contains your messages are available. So this shows up if you're uh, taking advantage of the messages feature that allows you to send messages using the web client. So we, we definitely don't want that sent along. And actions, and we're, here we're going to encounter some more permissions. So. The actions we want to use are all in the messaging category, specifically send SMS. And here, MacroDroid wants to access our contacts. It's going to use that to, to allow us to search for contacts to send messages to. It also needs some permissions around phone calls and SMS messages. So here, send an SMS. I'm just going to enter a fake number because I don't need everyone sending even more text messages to my pin. And here for the text, I give you a little helper hint the first time you use this. But here, we're going to want to use the notification title. That's going to be the person. And we're going to go ahead and put in front of that message from. And then a separator. And then the notification text. And constraint, you know, here I've discovered that messages, for some reason, can send out the same message multiple times in rapid succession. So here I'm going to add a constraint, which is macro not invoked recently. And put a three second timer I found on there works reasonably well. Now, if I did happen to get two relevant messages within three seconds of each other, I might miss one. But you know, it seems to be better than getting repeated messages. We'll give that a title and save it. Uh, also probably want to create one for Gmail. So here again, we want the device event notification for Gmail. 
And here, a string that Gmail sends a lot that we don't want to pass along is the string new messages, or contains the string new messages. And again, we want to send out a message. This time, you could say Gmail, but I'm just going to say email from notification title, notification text, and let's put the bogus number in there again. And no constraints necessary here. Finally, let's do a kind of a catch-all for other apps that we might want to get notifications for. And let's go ahead and select um, certainly WhatsApp. And let's also select Messenger and Instagram and Discord. And yeah, I think that'll do it. Nothing to match on here. And here we're going to add a little more information, namely the app name. So notification app name, let's actually put uh, in front of that, we'll put, um, actually we can use the app, app name as the first string and then just say message received from, and then the notification title and notification text. All right, so that's a good few macros to start out with. So, yeah, let's let's see how that works. Um, I actually have this set up on on another phone that's sending the actual messages. So what I'm going to do now is use the AI pin to send a text to the your phone contact, and then that will essentially bounce back and get sent back to the AI pin and show up in the catch me up feature if everything works as expected. Send a text to your phone. There are multiple matching contacts. Which one do you mean? iPhone or your phone? Your phone. Finding contacts. Your message to your phone says, this is a test message from AI pin. Okay to send? Yes. And we hear the message being sent. And if we go back to the Messages app, we should see that message show up because that's it's being sent out. So there we see the message being sent. So we received it, we turned around and you know packaged it up, send it back to the AI pin. And now if I do catch me up. You received a test message from AI pin. Play back that previous message. Your phone said, message from AI pin. This is a test message from AI pin. Great, so that's working just as we expect it to. Now, I'll, before I wrap up here, I'll just add a couple of other notes. First of all, I don't know what the long-term effects might be of so many text messages accumulating on your AI pin with no way of deleting them at the moment. So hopefully by the time that that could become an issue, Humane will provide some way to manage text message conversations. Also, I'm not sure what all these SMS messages will do to battery life. Uh, hope to follow up later on with a Q&A and an update video at some point, but hopefully before too long this video will actually become obsolete once the real catch-me-up on other devices functionality arrives. So,
Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, either here or you can find me on the Humane Discord. Thanks a lot.